helped by Mona Shataya. She is an advocacy and digital communication analyst and a non-resident fellow at the Tahrir Institute for Middle East Policy. And she joins me now live from Ramallah in Occupied West Bank. Good to have you here with us on uh, TRT World. Uh, the fact that Meta is actively censoring pro-Palestinian accounts and posts, does it, does it show you a political stance that Meta is taking? Does it possibly show a political stance? Uh, thanks for having me today. Um, basically, Meta has been censoring Palestinian voices for so long, and this is not the first time. And uh, when, whenever we are talking about this censorship, we're not only talking about uh, taking some content here and there. We are talking about systematic censorship that has been practiced against Palestinians, uh, where certain Palestinian accounts and content has been censored, taken down, taken down uh, so, uh, some Palestinian accounts and pro-Palestinian accounts have been suspended. Even some journalists and uh, media outlets accounts who are covering what's happening in Palestine, their accounts have been suspended and sometimes uh, censored in different ways and shadow banned. Um, and most recently, we are witnessing certain uh, actions that Meta also is taking that is contributing to defame Palestinians and label or normalize the labeling and stereotyping of Palestinians. One of them and the most recent one was uh, yesterday or the day before yesterday when uh, uh, when a WhatsApp uh, application which is also owned by Meta um, was um, um, showing certain pictures when, whenever people are searching for uh, the, the word Palestine, Palestine or Palestinian uh, Muslim, uh, where they are showing um, either a gun or a boy that is uh, holding a gun. However, if you are searching, for example, for an Israeli uh, child, you're going to only see children who are either playing soccer or reading or do whatever they uh, they want to do. And by doing that, Meta is contributing to labeling and stereotyping Palestinians, and they uh, keeping in mind what's happening on the ground and the lack of investment in, uh, in protecting and safeguarding Palestinians from the incitement, hate speech, violent speech, then they are normalizing um, the anti-Palestinian racism. And this is dangerous in such situations, especially with the escalation of the attacks against Palestinians all over, and most particularly in the West Bank, where Israeli illegal settlers are are attacking Palestinian towns and cities, burning some homes, and killing uh, and attacking uh, people in the streets. Right. You mentioned journalists uh, there. Now, according to reports, uh, dozens of journalists have been killed in Israeli attacks on Gaza. And now we are also hearing reports that Meta has disabled accounts of journalists, like you mentioned. In fact, one of uh, my colleague's account, who lives in the occupied West Bank, Facebook account, has been disabled. Uh, by uh, Meta. I wonder what does it, what do you think it tells us about Meta's stance on freedom of expression and freedom of speech? Well, the company claimed for so long that they are a space for everyone and uh, they are an open a platform for everyone so people can express their freedom of expression. However, when we see those practices, this maybe illustrates uh, that there is um, a systematic bias against uh, certain people uh, in global majority countries, in our case against Palestinians. And this is not something new. Palestinians have been witnessing such kind of censorship uh, on this platform for so long. Uh, it, it started uh, like uh, way before uh, this uh, ongoing escalations. Uh, and we have like a turning point in um, May events 2021, when uh, Meta uh, was hugely censoring Palestinian voices, and later on the advocacy groups were pressuring Meta and calling on them to conduct a human rights due diligence by a, an independent entity. The results of this human rights due diligence were published in September 2022, and it confirmed uh, the Palestinian civil society organization's uh, arguments that Meta's content moderation policies are largely moderating Palestinian Arabic content, barely moderating Israeli Hebrew content, which basically leads to um, a, a d denying Palestinians the right to free speech, gathering and assembly, uh, political participation, and non-discrimination. Okay. The unfortunate thing... Yeah, if, if I may... Why do you think that is? Why do you think Meta is working this way? Is it perhaps it is being uh, asked to regulate such a stuff uh, on 
social media platform by some entities? Well, there are certain problems whenever we are talking about this. We can, we, I, like I first, uh, I started in the previous question speaking about the uh, biased content moderation policies that were confirmed by the Business for Social Responsibility Human Rights Due Diligence. And what happened with WhatsApp and with Instagram over the past couple of weeks also confirmed that their, uh, their, their algorithms is basically biased. And there was another, uh, another report by Wall Street Journal which also said that Meta, they changed the threshold in the comments. Usually when there's escalations on the ground, Meta set a, thresh a threshold in the comments to be 80%. So whenever their system... Uh, uh, like discover that those comments are meeting the hostile speech of uh, of the company by 80%, they will basically take action uh, to take down or to to take the proper action with those comments. In the Palestinian case and with those events, they reduced the uh, threshold to be 25%, which means that they are taking a decision to silence and to censor uh, Palestinian voices more. And we've seen a clear example, especially Especially, for example, when the Al Ahli Hospital was bombed, and they were censoring certain pictures uh, that basically document the bombardment of the hospital. This is one thing, among other things. They also met that they were hiding flags in the comments, uh, and according to the Intercept, that was because uh, they they see that they are hiding that whenever it's coming in an offensive context. And till now, we can't understand what could be offensive about Palestinian flag. So we are talking about uh, decisions that are contributing to silencing Palestinian voices. But we are keeping in mind the power relationships um, and the pressure that the company also uh, are uh, maybe facing, because we are also know that uh, the company uh, is not transparent about the request that they are receiving from the Israeli cyber unit, who, uh, which was established in 2015. And they, uh, since then, they are sending uh, requests, hundreds of thousands of requests, to uh, social media platforms um, uh, annually to take down and to censor Palestinian voices. And according to the Israeli cyber unit, social right. media platforms are accepting uh, 87 to 90 percent of this, of those uh, escalations. Right. Fascinating insights into the topic. Mona Shataya, thank you very much for talking to us here on TV.